on the international scene, American Timothy Brown has become the second known adult worldwide to be cleared of the AIDS virus, having received bone marrow transplant from an HIV-resistant donor. Almost three years after, he received bone marrow stem cells from a donor with a rare genetic mutation that resists HIV infection in more than 18 months after he came off antiretroviral drugs, heavily sensitive tests still shows no trace of the man's previous HIV infection. AIDS experts said that the case is a proof of the concept that scientists will one day be able to end AIDS. Let's now join Joyce Ohaja in London for more stories. Good evening from London. President Trump is stepping up his trade war, turning his sights to India. He's announced plans to end preferential treatment, which allows billions of dollars of exports to enter the U.S. duty-free. Danny Vucinovic reports. Despite appearances, the relationship between the U.S. and India isn't all that it seems. Prime Minister Modi here. We've had him at the White House, and he's become a friend of ours and a great gentleman doing a fantastic job. Now, President Trump wants to kick the country out of the preferences program over its failure to provide assurances that it will give equitable and reasonable access to its markets. India is playing down the impact, saying the move only affects a fraction of its trade flows. Whether or not it will retaliate is still unclear. All these issues in the trade domain are on the table for discussion and it's a normal part of, part of government work to internally review these issues and come to suitable conclusions. So certainly I'm not in a position to tell you what we'll do and when we'll do. Last year, India exported more than $5 billion worth of products to the U.S. without paying duties. The latest move would be the strongest punitive action against the country since President Trump took office. It also comes just weeks before India's national elections. China retaliated with raising tariff uh, for, uh, from U.S. export, uh, meaning the goods they would import from U.S. India did not do that. So India, uh, we did not do that, and that was fair uh, that we said, okay, we will not retaliate. And after this, this is happening is something I would say uh, unfair to a close, a close ally. Scrapping concessions will take at least 60 days after both Congress and the Indian government are notified. Danny Vachanovich, Channels Television News. The former boss of Nissan has been granted bail by a court in Tokyo. Carlos Ghosn has been in custody since November on allegations that he understated his income. He's also been charged with aggravated breach of trust. The court set bail at almost nine million U.S. dollars on condition he submit to video surveillance and stay in Japan. <laughs> Demonstrations against Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika are continuing across the country, with thousands of people turning out for another day of protests. They're demanding his resignation and have rejected his offer of not serving a full term if he's returned to power. The 82-year-old has held office for 20 years and hasn't spoken in public since suffering a stroke in 2013. The U.S. has renewed sanctions against Zimbabwe for another year, ignoring calls by African leaders to lift them. President Trump says the new government's laws continue to pose an unusual and extraordinary threat to America's foreign policy. The U.S. Secretary of State says he hopes to have a team in North Korea within the next couple of weeks to restart denuclearization talks. His comments came as Kim Jong-un returned home from a summit with President Trump in Hanoi. Despite the failed meeting, his 60-hour train journey ended in much pomp and ceremony. We didn't get there uh, this past trip. Uh, in spite of lots of hard work that was done by uh, State Department team, DOD team, all the folks at the Department of Energy over the past weeks working with the North Koreans to try and outline what a real big deal would look like. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't get there. And so I am hopeful, although I have no commitment yet, uh, that we will be back at it, uh, that I'll have a team in Pyongyang in the next couple of weeks. Hillary Clinton has put to rest speculation that she's considering another bid for the White House. The Democrat has ruled out a second U.S. presidential run in 2020, but has vowed to remain active in politics.
Pakistan has released a video of what it claims is an Indian submarine attempting to enter its waters. The Navy says it's used specialized skills to ward off the vessel without launching an attack. And finally, a new conservation effort has been launched to help rid the oceans of plastic. Operation Straw aims to tackle pollution, and a team of volunteer snorkelers has been doing its bit to remove waste from the sea floor. The founder says Australians use about 10 million straws a day, and during the summer of 2018, 2,500 were collected from one cove alone. We actually once found an octopus, so there's lots of octopus in this bay, it's full of beautiful marine life, um, and we found an octopus holding plastic straws in its tentacles, and we actually had to pull them out, so that was a bit of a depressing tug of war. And that's your international news around the world in five. Brilliant. Many thanks indeed to Joyce Ohaja from our London Bureau. Sports News is next with Olumide Makola. Well, hello and welcome to Sports News. Nigeria's under 23 team will take on their Libyan counterparts in the first leg, first round of the third Africa under 23 Cup of Nations qualifying series in Tunisia on Wednesday, March the 20th. Libya is still unable to play international matches at home owing to the after effects of the Arab Spring political turmoil that began in 2011. The Olympic Eagles are the defending champions of the Africa under 23 Cup of Nations. Africa's flag bearers in the Men's Olympic Football Tournament of Tokyo 2020 will emerge during the Africa under 23 Cup of Nations to hold in Egypt in November. Some matches played in the Champions League today. Dutch side Ajax and English Premier League side Tottenham have advanced to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. The reigning European champions, Real Madrid, conceded twice in the opening 18 minutes to Ajax. The Dutch side further compounded the woes of Real in the second half to score two more goals, winning the tie 5-3 on aggregate. Meanwhile, Harry Kane's goal... Uh, gave Tottenham a place in the last eight as they saw off Bundesliga leaders Borussia Dortmund 4-0 on aggregate. Former Manchester United star Rand Giggs wants the teething problems of the video assistant referee VAR technology to be addressed as the European football governing body UEFA have welcomed the use of VAR for the Champions League this season. The Wales coach who also reacted to racism in the sport says football has a big social responsibility. Manchester United caretaker manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has confirmed Alexis Sanchez will be out for between four and six weeks with a knee injury. The Chile forward was forced off in the second half of United's dramatic 3-2 win over Southampton in the EPL on Saturday after collision in the Saints' penalty area. As well as the clash at PSG, Sanchez will also miss United's match against his former club Arsenal on Sunday, as well as the English FA Cup quarterfinal against Wolves later this month. That's it on Sports News. The News at 10 continues. And the main news again. The People's Democratic Party's leadership today staged a protest at the INEC headquarters challenging the outcome of the February 23rd presidential poll. The protesters also demanded that the military stays away from the polls on the 9th of March. Also today, the Director General of the President Buhari campaign, Rote Miyamichi, called on the PDP to partner with the All Progressives Congress, the APC, in developing Nigeria. And President Muhammad Buhari today appealed for greater support from traditional rulers to deliver on his promises to consolidate security, the economy, and fighting corruption. He promised to retire to his hometown of Dora in Katsina State after his tenure ends in 2023. And this has been the News at 10 tonight. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid night. Thank you.